so big for them, and they, they know they could safely waltz up the hill. And Silar with a couple of flak takes all of the small creeps. Let's see if they're gonna fight for these big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Silar's gonna take the anxious now. There's not much Navi can do about it. The thing that they really impressed us with at the Alienware Cup in the playoffs was they just got more off the map. And they did that in the laning stage of this game, but LGD is getting more off the map now, and it's because of the Beastmaster pick, it's because of the stolen gem. They have a great lineup if they're ahead to control the map, and they're taking advantage of it. So Siler must look like a genius now, right? Picking a Beastmaster who loses to OD in the lane. Or Xiao 8, you mean. Yeah, Xiao 8. All part of the plan. Yeah, all part of the plan. Lose lane, no problem. The Win script has been written, Lumi. LGD must suffer before they triumph. Always makes a better story. The Chinese, that, that, is the, that is the Chinese netizens attitude towards Xiao 8, which is that, uh, you know, he makes things interesting before deciding to take the game. Well, here, here's a big timing window for Na'Vi. They have about four minutes when the Aegis is down and the Roshan is not up yet to take a decent fight against uh, Sylar. Uh, but Sylar, meanwhile though, he is having a butterfly. He is doing exceptionally well. He could pick up a helm right now, but I think saving buyback for, for himself is a little bit of a bigger priority. Mm, yeah, I get Roshan's coming up in a few minutes' time. He can probably farm that buyback if he wants to get a Helm of the Dominator. But this is LGD China. They probably will save for buyback. Mm -hmm. they are not the, they're, not, they're not an overly aggressive team. Pretty defensive by nature. So the question, I guess, Lumi, is can Navi get map control back? Because they need it before this next Roshan. Uh, they, ideally, if the smoke gank works, you can steal back the gem. They have not bought a new gem. Uh, to me, getting a gem back and winning a team fight is an absolute must for them. Otherwise, I... Their ability to get into the Roshian pit is pretty weak. They don't have a great initiator who can just walk in and start the fight. I mean, LG China right now, if they get some smoke gank up the hill, LG China win this fight. As long as Kuroki doesn't land a four-man bro strike, uh, LG China should be okay. And it's very hard to actually walk up a hill like this, and, and it's not even making the wraparound. Do they have another smoke here? Uh, Sentry Ward dropped in the lane, maybe hoping that someone from LGD China is going to push it out, but no such luck. Now they show one hero Power bottom. Shot. It's going to scout things out, but that also means that LGD China knows exactly where that Windrunner is. And now you've got your home of the Dominator and Silar. Just had enough for buyback. Without that, now it's 2k gold again. Dang. Welcome to Gyrocopter Dota. Welcome to Ancient Stacking. Yeah, that is one thing that LGD have a great advantage in, is with Inner Beast as well as Flak, those Ancients just melt. Well, I mean, they also took the enemy Ancients, which, That's is, true. which is something that I don't think Navi took. Havost, at one point this game was leading by 4k gold. Now it's Silar leading the way. Those few team fight wins making the huge difference. And again, I mean, he's bought back a couple of times, right? Silar did, so... Uh, bought back once. Once, yeah, so it's... We, and we now we're both very surprised when he bought back TP up there and then uh, also died again. It looked pretty bad, but uh, it, was a, it was a very good team fight. I think this is exactly what LGD should be doing, is they know that Na'Vi's going to try and force a fight before the next Roche, because Na'Vi wants to get the gem back. They want to try and secure some map control near the pit. So if you just four or five man pretty much everywhere, there's virtually no way for Na'Vi to ambush you. Not with the Hawk, the, not with the aggressive wards they have. Ooh. Still fantastic. Oh, Vos here. Oh, nice link. BKB, BKB gets popped out, and I think you've done your job, right? Once you force out the BKB, you say, all right, okay. Job done. Reset. Let's go back. You know, now he's, he kind of needs this Lincoln Sphere BKB, else he would just keep on dying to these ganks. I mean, that's, that's nice and all, but he's actually not doing any damage. Like, 10 minutes ago, he's actually doing damage just based on his base damage, as well as Gemini attack. But the fact that there is very, very high armor now on these guys, as well as a mech that's been up for a long time, I don't think the Gemini attack is going to carry him through. He really needs a damage item, whether it's an MKB, whether it's a crit, he needs something. Now Navi pushing out the top lane, Havost and Dendi grouped up together. They're trying to eke out whatever farm they can. They're not really taking their own jungle too much anymore. When Havos did, he was forced to BKB. So wherever they haven't been ganked recently, that's where they go. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get whatever they can. This could be a huge item pickup. Kuroki gets a Blink Dagger. He does have a level 2 epicenter. Against Hawk, Familiars, and a gem on the Beastmaster. It probably will be hard to get off that epicenter, but if anyone could find a way, it should be Kuroki. That's actually the most important item that 2000 Goku afford for Navi because no other item could give you as much of an edge in a team fight. Because LGD, if you look at their team fight, they're just all vastly better than Navi. The only team fight coming out from Navi is like a two-man shackle shot on two heroes, and then ultimate from Dendi, and probably a burrow strike from. From Kuroki. Now you transform your Sanking to just a stunner into an AoE machine. And Dendi's ult, normally this OD ult is devastating, but this is not your DPS OD build. This is more of a utility defensive build. Force, mech, BKB, his int is only 95. You can even see an OD at this point in the game with like 150 in. So his ult won't hit nearly as hard as it normally does. Apparently DDC is having a hell of a Vice game right now. 7-1-9, whoever have him on Fantasy says, hell yeah. 
I mean, his familiar micro to me has not been the best, but that's the thing about this hero. It doesn't have H to be the his best. His sole assumption micro. How do you bring up the, how do you bring F8, up? if you bring up F8, fantasy point distribution. So far, DDC, 4.7 DDC in one game. Yeah. If this was a full day of games, that at that pace, you'd be like around 30 points yep. for the day. Just just playing it like a carry. Just get Visage. Go <laughs> go get points. Now, Vendetta up. DD on the run. In fact, Tavos could be in trouble Ooh. here. No, he's got a Sukuchi now. Blind he doesn't have a BKB. No, no, no Centaur Stomp yet. Roar, was that coming out? Or was it just Axes? Mana Burn and Impale will drive him back. Man, that Lincoln Sphere. OP. So LGD China. Fresh Ages for them. Is that a satanic? Oh, it's a satanic. And now it's time for That's a high ground. I mean, Silar is going to poke his head up, hit the tower down a little bit. Navi do, they have a good defense, base defense lineup, but I wouldn't say it's a great one by any means. Shackle Shot's pretty good there, and Epicenter can be huge there, but they don't have a Magnus. They don't have the best turtling lineup. If LGD want to force this high ground, they definitely can, but they still have room to grow. I mean, a lot of these heroes can get significantly stronger. Darkseer can get a Sight Device. You can get a Blink Dagger or Force Staff on your Nyx. Your Beastmaster can work towards a pipe if he'd like. Xiao Wei could even get a Necro 3. I mean, there's a lot of options for him to pick up. Yeah, I like the fact that Silar and his team is not forcing the issue against the enemy Rax just yet. Because even though with Aegis and Satanic, you say, oh man, Silar is by far the, the biggest and baddest hero on the map. It's very easy for Navi just to get a team wipe on the enemy side and, and get Bose. the ping back. He's Yow. trying to make a play here. I mean, He'll force out a BKB from Yao and a TP. Hey, Yow. nice victory. <laughs> Way too afraid, but obviously he does not have global vision like we do. Yeah, LGD had that amazing vision over the enemy ma side of the map, and now their vision's still Ooh, good, but Navi bad. are going for a backstab. Yeah. Remember, though, they've really got to get the jump here because there's an Aegis and a Satanic on Gyro. That needs to be... They need to instantly kill, like, two or three to take that There's fight. also three Visage Bird now on the air. Like, this is hard to deal with. LGD, it was a fledgling air force now. It's a pretty heavily militarized one. Yeah, but now LGD is making that push. A couple of things they got to be careful about. The Burrow Strike... The two three-man Burrow Strike you talked about, the two-man Shackle Shot they talked about. Also, don't forget that there's two Force Staffs up on the Radiant side. If you get Force in the base and, like, Burrow, BKB or not, you are going down, so... Can the, can the Kings of the Comeback find a way? Yeah. And, and Navi, a team you could just never count out. Normally they win it fast, but sometimes they have to do it the hard way. Can they do it now? It's going to be tough. Against the Satanic, BKB Gyro. Silar confidently onto the high Shackle. ground. Does get Shackled by two. There's an Epicenter available, but... Even if you catch two, I don't know if that's enough. You know, I feel like you've got a shackle two, and there's got to be three or four close for a four hero bird strike and epicenter. Navi just want to stall this one, but while they're stalling, the tower will start to take some damage. The familiars walking high. They do have a nice lineup against familiars though. The imp is just gonna murder them. Yeah, well, Siler says I don't care. I'm gonna just go in, and so is, so will the imp. They kind of just toggling on and off, but, but going for one. Give me your gold, Dendi says. Yeah, I, I mean, think, or uh, puppy says. If you look at what Hovolus is doing, very very good job slip pushing. He's gonna force a TP back, and there goes the push. I don't think so. LGD, they say take our tier tier. Ooh. We're going for high ground puppy now. Dead. Puppy dead. Off with his head, so shall wait. And now the tower to fall. They did not glyph for this. Now they'll save the glyph for the rack. Still hanging on. There's no buyback available on Puppy, a significant source of damage. Now Havos forced to TP and then defend. Navi fighting for their lives here. They are 10 and 2. Still going to be good, even if they lose this game. But LGD, this is a big win. They need this Epicenter. game. Epicenter. Epi coming in. Remember, there's a Satanic. Silar barely dropping. Nobody dropping. There's your back. Your wall as well. Now an impale. Kuroki to fall. And LGD did not even get a scratch on their paint job. They'll take a lane of Rex. They can go top now. This could be two. This could easily be game right the, here. The fact that Yao did not get caught in the epicenter was absolutely huge. He just stayed so far back, had the mech available, and once the epicenter got came in, he just surged up, wall, vacuum, popped his own BKB, and just went to work. So, LGD. And, so, and something that we were talking about. Well, one more, for one more shackle. This one not on the mark. They needed that. They don't get it. Now Havos driven back and Impale on Puppy gets astraled up for the time being, but the Look long at range roar. roar, they found Dendi, they back him in again, he's dropping fast, he'll take a spill, two dead, now make it three and a buyback immediately comes from Dendi, Havos driven to the north, heard it away, and now time lapsing back in, but LGD are just an unstoppable ball of doom. Five heroes still alive. They've taken one lane of Rex. Massive buybacks. It's a two hero impale. Once again, are Navi going to defend this? It's tough when Silar's this fat. Too fat, too furious, driving them back. One more hit to bring down Kuroki. He should Flack get it. him here. Flack it. No. Flack. Flack. Get yes. The, the Flack gets no. a kill. Oh, he does. But on the backside, they're losing Xiao 8. This will be three down. They do, however, kill off the Enchantress. And Silar is still alive. He's still at full HP. He still has an Aegis. Kill his entire team, Who's maybe. running from who on this fight? I'm not too sure. Funnix, Shaggo Shot, not going to hit. Force half away from the birds. And they will back off in the fight. As, uh, 
Navi two buybacks in that fight. They do defend their second lane of Rax. Mid lane is still pushing in. The Aegis is still up on Silar. As as good as it as only Navi, I feel like one of the maybe five teams in the world that can actually even defend and not lose right there, but. They still have Aegis on Gyro. You heal up and you go for the jugular. And now Demon Edge gets picked up. MKB gets picked up on Silar. That's just way too many items on Gyrocopter. You can't deal with this guy. So LGD China, you know, I, I, they have such a good lineup to break high ground. Having an Ags Beastmaster, that is the kind of thing that just wins you the game. You get one good roar when you're up, mm -hmm. and instead of being stymied at the enemy high ground, you just take racks. Yeah, and I gotta I got call Ben Wu because he says, generally, you don't have two roars in a team fight with a cooldown, but definitely dropped off two in that one because the cooldown bo bonus definitely uh, helpful there. Yeah, and it's also just that range. Getting Puppy when Puppy was pretty far back. And then getting OD from, like, he was on the low ground and just roared behind the tower. Yeah, like, that was like insane. something like yeah, that. Yeah. It was insane. Well, so we'll find a haste, and he does have an MKB. He didn't actually have to buy back. He didn't die in that last He fight. got the gem as well. This is actually pretty good, big, so he's going to be kind of invulnerable. The gem is nice for map control, but LGD are not going to pussyfoot around here. They're grouping up bottom as five. They're going straight for the second lane of rack. Navi, with tier two still up for LGD, will not be able to split push in time. They have to defend bottom. Can they do it? I mean, they have to, right? No more buy. Let's check out buyback real fast. Here. Weaver's got one, and that's it. That's it on Navi's side. So he is the biggest hero, but he's going to get caught out right now. BKB and then roared immediately. Havos should live. The Epi being channeled. It's good by Kuroki. I don't know if it's good enough. Havos gets pulled low, but he does match the time lapse out. A masterful escape, but it won't matter. Three dead. And even with that Havos buyback, he's going to have to be a 1v5 army. And Gyro's the actual 1v5 king. Now MKB up. This is game. Yeah, Dendi really poor, poor performance in that particular team fight. No BKB activation, no mech activation. Didn't even use his force F. He just waltz in and then got stunned and killed. So we we expect something a lot better out of Dendi. And game one should go to LGD China now. It was just those that, that those crucial team fights, getting the gem back for LGD China, taking the lane of Rex. To me, this is the most impressive way they could have won. Yeah, giving away some of Navi's strongest picks, letting them do exactly what they wanted to. Now Havos getting caught. That'll be four dead. And they can GG out anytime because it's coming soon, and they will. They'll GG out, but LGD giving away Navi's best picks, letting them run their signature style, letting them play on the Radiant side. or Lost the lane. Or playing against them on the Radiant side. Victory. Losing all the lanes yep. and then still coming back. I mean, it's standard LGD fashion. Lose the lane, come back to win. I cannot stress on how impressive that actually is because you're making a comeback against one of the best, if not the best team in the world. Is China rebanding? Is LGD China... I, going deep. They never disbanded for me, Lumi. Okay. In China, we trust. But I, in all seriousness, I mean, this is not all the Chinese teams. This is LGD. Right. As much as we like to joke that, you know, all the Chinese teams are the same, they're not. Yep. Tang Fu can't do this. Mm. No, IG can't. definitely can't do this the way they're playing right now. This is something that I think only LGD China is capable of. And lose the lanes, win the game. That's their yep. motto. That's pretty good. So Purge, Merlini, LGD China, already 1-0. Yeah, uh, I was wrong, but really insanely good team fighting from LGD. It was really fun to watch the whole game, especially the big engagement at the Tier 1 top. I thought that fight was really big for them. Mm. Like you guys said, they were behind, and they ended up going pretty even on kills. They did force a buyback on uh, Siler, but it still went pretty okay. And it just continuously snowballed into ganks and things, so... Yeah, usually when teams 5-man like that, they don't really get that much, but they were still able to Ancient Stack, and they were still able to get some sort of farm, get an early BKB, and LGD China is one of the, the best comeback teams. They're just so used to being at a disadvantage early, yep. even with the OD matchup. I also thought they handled that really, really well. Uh, Beastmaster is not something that you see pick very often, um, but, I mean... Past the laning phase, what does OD really do? He had a mech and he had a BKB, but I didn't, I didn't feel his impact at all compared to the Gyrocopter, who just had a BKB and was just destroying people. Yeah, a lot of the times LGD was getting the jump on Navi in the opposite way around, and, mm. and when that happens, your BKBs are less useful. And even when you get them off sometimes, you have a Beastmaster Roar. So Beastmaster Roar to set off, waste a couple seconds, and then that'll time out, and then they have a lot of stuns. And I think the one stat that really stood out to me that the stat guy brought up was that LGD's opponents, on average, are stunned twice, two times more, uh, for twice the duration than other teams. So basically they just picked tons of stun heroes and it totally shows yeah. there and they made kills happen. The supports there. played amazingly. The Nyx Assassin yeah, and the Visage great. were fantastic. Mm -hmm. And like Navi di weren't 
they weren't forced to uh, like fight that many team fights early. They had a Weaver and Enchantress. Those are notoriously poor for team fights unless you're like super stacked. Yep. But even then, you don't really want to go against a mass stun lineup and a gyrocopter. BKB and under farmer or not, he still does a lot of damage with cooldown with Rocket Barrage with Flat Cannon. And then like once he got Butterfly and Satanic and then Aegis, it was like, how do you kill him? Yeah, and even I think a lot of the early team fights were so close, and the only reason they won them was because of the damage output of Rocket mm. Barrage. Despite their items not being that great, when they finally got a stun on Dendi or a stun on Havost within century range, the Rocket Barrage does two-thirds of their HP mm. or something like that. It really is one of the highest damaging nukes for four skill points. So Navi does like to play aggressively, but sometimes you do have to tone down the aggression. Like Havos was trying to search for solo kills. He got picked off that one time uh, when he even when he used BKB, and I felt like that was like a kind of turning point in the game where, hey, get out of our jungle. We have control of our side of the map now. You guys need to sit back and farm, or we're just going to destroy you in five v five. And that just continuously happened. They just kept destroying them. Yeah, I think they really underestimated the Beastmaster Hawk as well. Yeah, like how many really times, did. especially when they got the double kill in the Radiant Jungle by the by the large camp. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't lose two heroes like that to a gank, and they, yeah, they burned a Beastmaster Roar or something, but once you have Aghanims, it's a 45 second cooldown, and that's really easy gold advantage, and they just kept going. Havos did get some pretty good items by the end of the game, really fast Midas on him, but rough game for Na'Vi, they end up losing eventually, so LGD takes game one, pretty cool to see. Yep. Because they didn't my rares on Na'Vi. Can, uh, <laughs> can we go to the good stuff, see how Fnatic and uh, Dignitas have been doing? Cause You've been watching the games, right? No, this is game two that's happening. I don't know what the result of game one is. Anybody? So Dignitas won and LGD won. So if, if we Ooh. might see Fnatic EU drop down to yeah. losers bracket, Ooh. that well, would be a twist of fate. The whoever loses their next game drops, right? Like if Dignitas or Fnatic wins, whichever guy wins drops. will advance. Oh yeah. Whoever yeah. wins advances. Whoever loses the next game drops. Not necessarily. No, whoever if loses LGD plays tiebreaker. It will. If uh, okay. It depends on what LGD China does. If LGD China wins, then the loser of Fnatic and Dignitas get out, right? Right. I see. If so LGD loses, then they play tiebreaker against whoever loses that series. Right. So LGD at least minimum has a shot for Ford in tie the tiebreaker. Okay. And That's same with Dignitas. Good. So uh, who's does that, is everybody going to cast the tiebreakers after all the matches are done? Is that is that what this extra time is for? I guess, but I have a flight to attend to, so. Y'all casting you leaving today, Lumi? I'm leaving today to Seattle, yeah. Oh, wow. Lucky. Lucky Lumi. Lucky. So Lucky. do you guys think <laughs> LGD can go 2-0? Well? That's the big question now. I think that's... I, I, seeing the way that they played. I if mean, they don't mess up on the draft, Navi so. just seemed like they were just doing what they did for the past, like, 10 wins in a row, which is like, hey, we got an early lead, let's just, like, completely, like, roll them. And they... I, 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 Kind of want to say it's like overconfidence. Yeah, I think that they, if they, they had control of the game, they just like kind of like gave away that advantage. I think that they just need, yeah. they just need to adjust their play style differently because it is LGD and all they do is five man Dota after they're behind and and stack and farm up and get BKB and then just team fight. That's all they do all yeah. the time. I would agree with that completely. I think that uh, Navi can win if they play their normal game, but mm. they tried to force team fights too hard and LGD right. had the right heroes to deal with yeah. it and were able to get an advantage from that. So both teams can yeah. win. Yeah, both teams yeah, can win. Yeah, I would agree. Who's going to win? I think Navi still has a better chance. Is it still 30-70, though? I would give him, no, like, 65-35. I, yeah. I thought it was 60-40. I was surprised the it was faith, 68, The faith is whatever. wavering yeah, it was, amongst the Navi supporters in the studio. It was scary. The LGD, the LGD China supporter, the lone man who supported them, still stands strong. Is that me or you? I still think it's a 2-0 LGD, because they need this more. Okay. They need this so much more. All right. There is a difference between fighting for like a crucial objective and just wanting to show that you're the top dogs. Yeah. That's there's a difference. Mm. And if they win this they make it. Guaranteed. So if they really don't want to lose. That would they would have to play a tiebreaker match. Sure, I think they have a good shot of being either Fnatic or Dignitas in a tiebreaker, but it'd be much better on their psyche if they don't have to be that close to going to a loser's bracket. I mean L G D has traditionally like they had to play in the qualifier match because they replaced a person, so yeah. they're already cutting it close, and then they just they dropped stomped to, everybody, yeah. Yeah. and then they came back. So They dropped a the loser's bracket. And in the Alien World Cup, and they yeah. just came back and stomped everybody. So, I mean, how should he? Now, now, you're, now you're back on the bandwagon, Lumi. You are the worst fanboy ever. You are like, what's wrong with fanboys? I'm just very concerned about my Chinese teams. And I'm like the biggest. And your way of team. showing it is to just completely abandon them in their moment of need. No, it's like give them tough love. Am I gonna, am I gonna have to talk <laughs> to your girlfriend about the kind of no, kind of man that you are? Give them a tough love. It's like if you're down, you kick them a little bit and be like. No, you don't kick them. You you 
say, leave my house and never return to your five-year-old child. Yeah. And then you, you, never got, you leave them on the streets of Compton and just walk away. Have you never got this disowned by your Asian parents? Like, this is what I'm doing to them. Well, since I have zero Asian parents, no. Then, see? No. You, don't, you never experienced tough love? The real tough love. <laughs> <laughs> there actually, there was this one time where I was being a really bad kid, and my mom was like, okay, I'm bringing you to military school. And she actually drove me in the car for like three hours, and I was like seven or eight years old. And I really thought I was going to military school and never coming back. <laughs> Needless to say, I behaved very well after that. Okay. So... All right, guys, we're going to take a very quick break. Game two is coming up. LGD leading Navi 1-0, but their work is not done yet. They've got a lot left. They need the 2-0 Navi to secure their advancement, to secure that top four finish. We'll find out if they can after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our second game in a two-game set between LGD China and Navi. 
an absolutely crucial game for LGD China. They lead 1-0. They were 7-5 and five in Group A. Now they're 8-5. and five. And if they win this game, they'll be 9-5 and five and guaranteed top four advancement in Group A. Yeah. Uh, now it depends on how the other matches are going right now. Fnatic versus Quantic going on, I believe, on AC stream. Uh, Fnatic versus Dignitas. Fnatic versus Dignitas. So that's a very important matchup as well. But forget that. Right now, we want to see LG China versus Na'Vi, and LG China had a convincing victory. It wasn't just like they barely scraped by. Yeah. It was come back from behind and taking Na'Vi, taking them where they're strongest, which is the chaotic mid-game team fight, where they just roll over 10 other opponents so far. Now, as, as, as uh, Purge and Merlini pointed out, Na'Vi made some mistakes, they overextended, but a lot of that was LGD forcing mistakes and just outplaying Na'Vi. And when any team loses, they make mistakes. So it's part of the process. So to me, LGD China, that wasn't a Na'Vi throw. That was an LGD China seizing the game, outplaying Na'Vi, and securing a victory. But they did it once. Now they're showing the exact same draft to Na'Vi. They had first pick in game one. They had dire sight in game one. And they have the same in game two. Na'Vi, I think, choosing the Radiant here again. They're always preferring the Radiant when they can get it. This time, though, Na'Vi is already switching up their draft. They saw the Chen got banned in phase two, so they pick it up first pick now. Last game, it was a first pick OD. Weaver. Or Weaver. And OD. then OD, yeah. So it's a Navi. If LGD do the exact same thing, Puppy is going to be concocting a rebuttal. Yeah, I, I think right now Navi is saying, you know what? We know exactly what you can do, LG China, but let's see if you guys figure us out. Uh, I mean, is this a punch game? Because when there's a punch, there's also a Chen sometimes. And there's a Rubik. So they get the dual roam combo very early. They get the. Uh, the Kuroki Rubik very early. So they secure their supports. They don't get a Dendi hero. They don't get a Havost or a Funic hero. I mean, Funic can pretty much play anything with the way Navi plays. But generally, we've seen them prioritizing the Havost and Dendi hero. So if you're LGD gaming now, seeing this, how do you respond? There's a Light... Uh, or sorry, there's a Weaver in the pool. There's an OD in the pool. These are not typical LGD heroes. They are options. If you want to go for something like a DK or a Magnus really? mid, there's no outrageously strong mid to contest it. Maybe you can get away Five with seconds. it. OG China really loves a Visage, so that's a hero that I think they'll turn to. Gyrocopter is a very He's good pick here as well, dealing with Chen, and they do pick up the creeps. Particularly because LG it seems like Silar as well as LG defend. has figured it out in terms Navi's of the way that Navi defend. most likely wants to play, which is making team fight. And Gyrocopter is probably the best carry hero you can have at then. Yeah, and I know you were a bit surprised by the BKB build, but mm -hmm. that's just how LGD always plays the Gyro. Oh, okay. That's that's just the way Silar I, I plays it. I did it yesterday. I wasn't too impressed in that particular game. Mm -hmm. Generally, I've I seen teams in the past having more success by Five getting things like Aquila, drums, or a bracer, or a. Yeah, but they're not LGD. Tell tell LGD, as Merlini mentioned, they're the one of the best five-man teams, and that they play a lot differently from IG. IG is much more chaotic. IG is a lot more like Navi, except just not as good at it right now. Mm -hmm. But they try and play the same style. To me, for LGD, BKB Gyro, early Mech Darkseer, five-man Dota. That's what they like. Okay. Well, let's see if he's going to be having a similar game. Now, obviously, it depends on how Navi drafts as well. Magnus being banned out here, so respecting a little bit coming out of either Yao or Xiao A's gameplay. Let's not forget about Nature's Prophet. That's a hero that we haven't seen today just yet, and both uh, both teams plays it pretty good. Xiao A plays a really good... Uh, we all know about Funix Nature's Prophet, because most of the Western fans... Uh, I assume we have a predominantly Western audience. A lot of you guys have seen Funix Prophet. He's fantastic, but Xiao A plays a masterful one as well. He's been playing it since Navi's TI2. In fact, I would say he was the Navi's best Prophet at pick. TI2. He was winning 1v1 matchups, getting an 8-minute mech, going back for a 10-11-minute to 11 minute Midas, constantly turning team fights. I don't know. We probably won't see that kind of profit this game because we're not seeing many 1v1s in the offlane. But mm -hmm. uh, we could see a Xiaowei profit. We could see a Funic profit. If Navi want a 5-man, if they want to push, or not 5-man, but push early, they definitely can with a Chen and a Rubik. Uh, profit would give them good split push. We'll see what direction they go. Profit also isn't particularly good against the way that Navi played that last game. Yeah. If you want a hero that's in that engagement that gives you a big impact in terms of nukes or stuns, Prophet's not one of those heroes, and we're going to see an early Marana being picked up, so... I mean, is this is the ancient thing that they've been doing? I th probably. Rubik, Chan, Marana is kind of a, a mediocre tri-lane. I think if you want to run a Marana tri-lane, you go... Maybe the Chen, but I'd, I'd say probably Enchantress, and then definitely for a Shadow Demon, because that's much better setup for Arrow sure. than the Rubik Lift. Bane Elemental is another good addition if you want to go Marana Trilane, but they already have their two supports selected. So Yeah, so to me, this is Marana at Ancients, Puppy in the jungle, neutraling away. Rubik will be pulling a lot for Kroki. Other thing is, Navi Hack. doesn't really like to go aggressive with his Rubik, because they want to get him Navi's farm and a level 6. Because we've seen, Rubik can have a huge impact with those kind of levels. Yeah, the thing that uh, also will stress on LGD support is that Moonlight Shadow, you don't know when's coming, you really need to have Sentry prepare for it, and 
That's just one more thing that they have to worry about. Anti -mage. Now an anti-mage. Navi, they're going... This is reminds now me a lot of TI2. To they would go back to Havos' hard carries in a lot of the big games. They went for his, uh, his Faceless Void in one or two big games against some of the Chinese teams. We saw his anti-mage come out as well. And they'll go for it here. So... They already have a great split push lineup with Moran and Anti-Mage, and if they do get a Nature's Prophet with that third pick, LGD, that likes to 5-man, will have a hard time dealing with that. I think LGD picking up all three of their cores so early will just allow Ten Navi to free counter pick because if AM ever gets up to his BKB, the game's done. Because yeah. when you're dealing with Battle Fury, Mantis out BKB, none of these cores 